want to talk to you a little bit this morning about vision. Now, if, <clears throat> excuse me, if um, my vision, when we would have, were building this building with the lights, would have been a, and a flashlight. And some people have a vision of lights, 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 right? Which vision do you like? Lights, lights, and lights, right? And uh, are you enjoying the sound system? My vision when I was younger was there was a speaker over here, a speaker over here, turn it up and down here. We've got one of those, by the way, and you turn it up and down. But somebody has better sense than I do when it comes to some things. I'm going to stick this thing back here before I knock it over. And uh, our vision changes as we get older. I've worn glasses a long time. Um, and my eyesight has not gotten any worse. It's been... You know, I could take it off and read this probably, but your eyes get used to things. But people have, in the natural, have different visions. I've listened to, I've listened to people who have closed their churches down because their vision was on what everybody was saying. And like in our case, we've kept the doors open and you're here. Because we have a different vision. We have a vision of the Lord. Like Mark said, <clears throat> he wants your soul to be in good health. He wants you to prosper and be in good health. And God wants us to prosper. Would you hand me that bottle of water? And, <clears throat> excuse me, I am so sorry. And so I... Um, we have, we have different visions, um, and, and uh, you know, we need vision because God told us without a vision, his people perish. So we need direction and vision, and I'm, I'm sure that everybody in this room, or most everybody in this room, has seen our communication towards people who carry a Christian view has been almost stifled across the across America. And so we need, we, need, we need to have God's vision. You know, God has a vision for the lost. Anybody got an idea what God's vision for the lost is? It's that all the lost is saved. But how many of you know that, does not, that is not happening, right? It's never happened. But that is God's will for the lost to be saved. Because he said, come unto me, all you are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. It is, it is God's purpose for us, for the lost to be saved. I remember when I came to an altar at about 15, 14, 15 years old, 16, somewhere in that neighborhood of my life, that my life was so burdened down with sin that when Jesus came in, the sin, the guilt, the depression, the despair, the agony, the woe is me, and she was gone, life was changed in my life from emptiness to full, from misery to joy, that God cleansed sin and made a different person out of me from the inside out. When I got up from that altar, having a vision of the Lord high and lifted up and his train fills the temple, as I came in, into his presence and he changed things, things were changed permanently. I never was the same. I never... But you know, also, God has got a vision for the church universal. Now, when you read the Apostles' Creed and it said, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, you remember reading that? That, that stuck out like, I mean, not like exploded, right? Yeah, I saw that. You know what the word Catholic means when that was written? It means universal. It means universal church. We believe in the universal church. We're part of the universal church. We believe in that, right? We believe in, in God the Father. We believe that is what we believe. And, and so God has got a purpose for his church. And I want to tell you, I think God's got big purpose for Cornerstone. 
big purpose for Cornerstone. He's got a big vision for Cornerstone. Because, and I'll tell you one of the things that, one of the things I, I, I believe that is this. I believe that because you're here, I'm here, the Lord is here. And the Bible says we're two or three are gathered in my midst. I'm in, I'm in, we're two or three gathered in my name. I'm in the, his midst. And I believe he has purpose for us. Purpose. Now, I know there's some churches that believe that God's will is going to be done no matter what. No matter what. If God's will was going to be done no matter what, he would not give us instructions to pray. Right? We pray and we believe, <clears throat> excuse me, and we walk in the things he's called us to walk in. Because believe it or not, in God's purpose or his plan for anything we're involved with, the, the, some of that determines upon what we do. It, some of it is determined upon what we do because we need to pray. You know, if it was God's will for demons to just be out of people, he wouldn't tell us to cast out the devil. Because prayer has, the, prayer has a place of changing things and making things different. Because God's called us. See, and I believe he said that the, the Bible says, Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Because by praying, we enter into the supernatural spiritual world and, and things are one on your knees before they're one in your hand, but they get in your hand because we've been on our knees. Now, you don't, you don't have to pray on your knees. You can sit and pray or stand and pray and walk and pray. But we have a place where we, we need to, to be part of what the Lord's doing. And I want to tell you, part of that is prayer. And I, I want to say this. I want to say this. To anybody who's here and you would like to get involved, there is room in this church for you. There is room in this church for you. There's, there's room because, because there just is. There's always room. C.M. Ward used to sing an old song. He's, there's room at the cross. There's room for one more. There's room. There's room. In the kingdom, there is room. Because my father is not broke. His name's not El Chipo. It's El Shaddai. He is, he is here with us to help us and to provide and to give us what we need because we're blessed. And in this church, and it should be everywhere, it should be in every, every organized or non-organized or however church, there is, should be room. There should be room. In Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall be that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's room. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That, that is, and in John chapter, th verse 316, because this is, this is what the Lord, it says, for God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son. They sung that this morning. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's room. There's room for every person who wants to come to the Calvary and, and there's room. I'm so glad there was because when I came, if anybody should have been blocked out, it should have been me. But you know what? When I went to that little Nazarene church in the community I was in, it, the whole church, the whole Nazarene church would fit in this sanctuary from corner to corner, front porch to the end, the bathrooms and everything would have fit in here. It was a small little place. But you know when I walked in that door that Wednesday night, there was a bunch of people on their knees praying. And it was just like, I just, you know, I'd never been to that church before. And they were all in there praying. And it was just like, a, 
I was, I walked by the church and a magnet just kind of pulled me right in the door. It was the Holy Ghost. My wife said, Jesus, that's the Holy Ghost. I don't want to fall off the edge of this thing. I better move back. <laughs> but it was just like the magnet of the Spirit of God just pulled me right in. And I had went to a community church as a kid, and I jumped on the tables and kicked the chairs over and stole the offering and, and <clears throat> uh, lied about everything. And, and um, so I, I, knew that, I knew there was something. But when I walked by this Nazarene church, and I remember walking in there, and those people were up at the altar praying, and they were, and I just went and sat down like this. My wife says, quit that, Grover. But I sat down in that, that Nazarene church like this, and my bus driver that drove the bus came to me and said, what do you want, Grover? What do you need? And because the Spirit had been pulling and tugging at my heart, I knew I'd heard a little bit of it. I said, I need to get saved. You know what happened? He got my hand. He marched me right up to the altar. We got down on our knees, and we stayed there until until I was saved. And that only took about one, Jesus saved me. God forgive me. And my life was changed. At one spoken word from the Lord, it was changed. Because God's got a purpose for the lost. He's got a purpose for the church. He's got a vision. He's got a vision. You know, even in, even in, even in our vision, even if the Lord gives you something, and I'm going to share with you something the Lord gave me. Even if, even if God gives you something, sometimes you can't eat it all in one bite. Sometimes it takes time. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah, it says line upon line, precept upon precept. And then it says it again, line upon line, precept upon precept, because... Because in your walk, in, in your Christian walk, you, you have to take things a little at a time. I want to share with you a story. It's not a story. It's a true thing. And um, so before I go there, I want, to, uh, I want to tell you what our church needs. Our church needs this. Thank you. I need this too. If you're going to learn something about me, learn this. I'm a crybaby when I come to the pulpit. <laughs> I can be as mean as a rattlesnake. <laughs> but when I get here, Lord help me, I cry out all that meanness. <laughs> um, so here we go. You can't get it all at one time. But I'm going to tell you what Cornerstone needs. We need healthy leadership. We need healthy people, and guess what we'll, we'll have? We'll have a healthy church. We have healthy leadership, healthy people, we'll have a healthy church. It'll be an outgoing church. It will be an extroverted church, not an introverted church. It will not be us four and no more. It will be a church that looks out and has a vision that is bigger than us. I'm going to tell you what real vision is. Real vision is that is something bigger than us. I told you last week, and you'll be real blessed to hear that um, Thomas is preaching next week. Um, one, of the, one of the things about a vision is vision needs to be bigger than the vision maker. If you're the vision maker, it's going to be no bigger than you. But when God gives you a vision, it's a vision that is bigger than him. When I was in the mountains preaching at a, at a church, I've told you some stories about how things happened and, and what have you in that little old church in the mountains, which was a, which put a lot in me that, that I have a lot. You know, you may not understand some of the things you're going through now, but those things that you're going through now can develop you into people, people who have an ability to help people I tell you, I know what it is to be broke, don't we? I know what it is to be broke. 
I know what it is to not have anything for Christmas for your kids. I know what difficulty is. Now, right now, today, I'm, I'm not too, things are not too difficult. But I know, I know what, what rough times can be like. So I can be compassionate towards people who are going through struggles. There's a few things I'm, I've never experienced and hope I never do. It's the death of a child. I hope I never experienced the death of a grandchild or death of a great-grandchild. Well, actually, we did. Actually, we did experience the death of a grandchild. But you know what else we experienced? We experienced the resurrection of the power of God in that dead grandchild. The great-grandchild. But... But I just want to, I'm going to tell you a little story, and it kind of has to go with here. Because, you know, last week I told you that, that this church's vision is going to be much bigger than we can imagine. We are going to preach the gospel around the world. And about six months ago, or seven months ago, I think the Assemblies of God opened up a TV network called WOW, WOW TV. And... It goes into 240 million homes around the world. Uh, now, can you say wow? wow? Wow. Well, when they were starting, they sent me a, a little message and asked us if we would like to be on wow. And at that time, we were upstairs. And uh, at that time, things were a little different. And I said, I said, you know, it would be nice, but we're not in a place where we can do that. And so that went on. Well, last week, they contacted me again. I haven't answered their contact. But what I'm, t what I'm saying to you, if God gives you a vision, gives you a call, he's got a way of fulfilling that when you think there is no way. He can make a way through the Red Sea when you're Moses and you don't realize there is a way. You can be a disciple... You can, you can be a disciple and look at Jesus Christ on the cross and walk away and say it's all over. And then he comes out of the grave. Then he gets up. Then he's a risen. And you look at a risen Savior, and that takes on a whole different perspective. So we... We have a vision, and we have a purpose, and we have a goal, and God is going to fulfill it. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. Some of you have heard this, but I'm going to try to tell you it in its entirety, and, um, and so that um, you kind of see where I'm at in my life. I guess when I was, I don't know how old I was. 30 maybe, somewhere around that age. Well, it was between 20 and 70 because that's where I'm at now. <laughs> I was, I was um, just seeking God. I have sought the Lord all my life. Sometimes I've had to work so much that seeking God got put on a back burner, you know, because things in your life, things just happen and situations and what have you. But, but I was uh, seeking the Lord, and the Lord gave me a dream, a twofold dream. The first, the first dream was this, this right here. You're sitting in it. And, and so, and as I'm going to share some scripture with you concerning the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we, Peter was, um, in the Bible, you know, he, he walked by people in his shadow fell on them, and just his shadow brought healing and deliverance and, and those kind of things, just his shadow. You know, Paul the Apostle, they took, they took aprons off of his body and they gave aprons to people, and people got healed because you know why? The anointing of God is tangible and it is transferable. 
It's tangible and it's transferable. It is, it is something you have you can give. Because Peter and John said when the man went up to the, up to the temple and he was sitting there begging for some alms, they said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. And they took him by the right hand and pulled him up on his feet. And the Bible says his ankle bones got immediately healed. He went into the temple leaping and shouting and praising God. And it made all the religious people mad. <laughs> Doesn't say that, but that's what happened. He, uh, so in my dream, the there was a bunch of people came. That's why I'm going to tell you right now, this church is going to grow and explode. And it's going to grow and it's going to explode. And, and there was a bunch of people, and, and I, in my dream, I said, I can't pray for those people. I think there was around 200. I thought, I, said, I can't pray for all those people. So I, in my dream, I stuck my hand out like this, and like Peter, just like that. And the Lord just, things just happened. Just people got healed, you know. And, and, um, and I woke up startled. I could not believe. I, I was startled. I was stunned for what God had just showed me in my dream. I was stunned. It was just like, in fact, I stood up in bed and I said this. I said to the Lord, I cannot believe you for that. That is too much. And I went back to sleep. And I had another dream, just a few, and I don't have dreams, do I, Evelyn? No, not, you're not in them, right? <laughs> um, and so I had another dream, same night, just a few minutes later. And the Lord, and the Lord said, I'll pray for you, that, I'll pay for that church of yours. Within a year. Now, you got to understand, we were in the mountains. Our offerings were $15 to maybe $175, $200. And our, our monthly payments on a building that was about $175, $180 a month. I wish we were there now. It would be easy. But, but there was never enough money to come in to pay for everything. It was, we were always broke. We were always struggling. People from Michigan sent us money every month. People from down here send us money to help us because they took us on kind of as a missions project. And we, we, just, we just struggled and I woke up. I mean, I, this startled me again. And I sat up in my bed and I knew what the Lord was speaking to me. And I made a, I guess you could call it a fleece. I said to the Lord, I said, if you can pay for that church in a year, then I will believe you for the other miracle. Now, guess what happened? Elise and I was out, and we, you want to raise your hand, Elise? It's Elise there. We were out. She was four years old. So now I can tell you how long ago that was. How old are you? Just tell me. <laughs> we were out. We were out fishing, and she was four years. I mean, we were out driving in a car, because I felt like the Spirit of the Lord told me, Somebody needed Jesus, and I needed to be the person to bring Jesus to him. So I told Elise, I said, you want to go with me? And she said, yes. Four years old, she jumped in the front seat, and I jumped in that old car I was driving. And we drove all over the mountains. We drove, I drove from Jefferson to Boone, drove, and we decided to come back on a highway called 194. And after the whole day was over, I didn't get anything to eat because I didn't have any money. I couldn't, we just spent all day, just I spent every dollar I had in gas, and we just drove around, and we pulled, Elisa said, Dad, can we please stop and watch the cows eat grass? And I said, you know, there's a, I said, there's a uh, little fishing pond down here. Maybe that's where God wants me to stop. And we pulled in there, and there was this, this man, and he was sitting there, and he asked Elisa if she wanted to fish. And I was thinking I, the fish were $1.70 a pound. And you caught them out of this pond. And I was thinking I can't pay $1.70 for one fish. And so she gets the fishing pole and she rears it back and she throws it out like this and hooks the guy right in the back of the head. <laughs> Remember hooking Jim Smith in the head? 
And, and so he says, what do you do for a living? Well, I said, I'm a preacher. And I don't want to invite you to church, and I want to talk to you. He said, you know what? I grew up in a Pentecostal holiness home. My mom prays for me all the time. So listen, your praying works. To this day, that man, still Christian, loves the Lord. And he's an old man now, but he's going his way to the kingdom just like all of us are. And so he came to church, and in the process, he got saved. And he said, he said, he came walking in the building sometime later, and he said, God wants me to give you something. He said, he wants me to give it to you. I said, what is it? It was a 50 acres of property with a five-bedroom home on it, valued at $50,000 more than we owed debt on that old church I was at. And I knew right then and there, and it was within a year. That was within a year. I knew right then and there, blessed be God. What he said was true. And so, but I also knew one other thing. In my dream, I was an older man. I'm an older man today. And this is the building that he showed me to be in. And so the next thing, the next thing is a wave of revival. The next thing is a wave of revival. And I'm here to proclaim it in the name of Jesus. I'm prophesying in the name of Jesus. There'll be revival. There'll be a move of God. We'll see the Lord high and lifted up and his train filling the temple in this house. So, long and short of that, we got, we got, he gave that property. I, I would not take it. I, I told him, I said, I cannot take this. He said, well, can I give it to your church? And I said, you can give it to the district office the assemblies of God, and when it sells, they'll put the money on the mortgage. Well, guess what happened? They took the, they took the title deed of the property, and, and it sold within just a few, few days of that year. We sold that. It was valued at $126,000, and we sold it for $98,500 some dollars, almost $100,000. And um, there wasn't enough money to pay off that building. We were three hundred dollars short. Three hundred, three hundred dollars short. You know what I did? I reminded the Lord of something. I said, "Lord, you said you would pay for this in a year, and three hundred dollars is not three hundred dollars short." Is not paying for it. Let me just tell you what happened. The realtor that sold the property said, the Lord spoke to me to give you some money. Can anybody guess how much she gave me? Wrong. She gave us $1,200. Now, do you like the way Renee plays piano? She did a pretty fine job, doesn't she? Didn't she? Good, yes. Because she does. I know she's my daughter. I'm not biased. Now, you know that's not true. But, but we took and paid for the building, and we bought a piano. We bought a piano because we didn't have piano in that church. And we bought some pews. You know why they call them pews, don't you? That's why we have chairs. <laughs> so we bought, we bought a piano, and we bought some pews with that money. And here's what happened. See, one miracle will just facilitate another miracle. I had a piano in my home. Honey, do you remember what the piano looked like? In, if you had upstairs, we put upstairs. Do you remember what it looked like? Okay, if I get off course here, you can raise your hand. It was one of them big old pianos. Big back on the back of it. And you sit down on it, 
And it just one of those, we bought it for $100, you know. It's one of those old-timey pianos. And we put it upstairs where we lived at, because we lived in the church. We lived inside the church. And we, we um, bought that nice piano, which was about this regular size and about that high, you know. It was a light color. And, and, um, and from that, from that one miracle, we bought that piano and... I remember the night that God anointed her day to play the piano on that old piano. It was a supernatural. She's 12 years old. She went from four years old playing piano, piano, having piano lessons to 12 years old and not having another piano lesson in the studio. And when she got anointed by the Holy Ghost to play, she played like this, ding, 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 ding. And after her anointing, she plays like you walk her. What? What's that? <laughs> My wife wants me to decree and declare to you that we never paid for one piano lesson. Somebody else blessed us with the piano lessons. You know why? We couldn't have paid for the piano lessons. We struggled to pay for the piano book. Because that's what the woman said. She said, I'll give her piano lessons. I own a piano studio. I teach piano professionally. She said, you just buy the material. And it was a struggle to buy the book because we were struggling so much. We were in the ministry and we're having. I hope you all don't have this. I hope you all don't have this. God, you keep the preacher humble and we'll keep him poor. <laughs> that's what that was in the mountain was we, we'll... We'll keep him poor. You just keep him humble. Well, it worked pretty good. So, so the long and the short of it is, the miracle God gave us bought us another situation where a miracle could happen, and it happened. And I want I'm here to tell you that God is on the throne, and He's not changed, and His calling is the same. Now, I want to. I got this out of a, a book. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You know, Peter, in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, Peter's anointed preaching on the day of Pentecost caused 5,000 people to come to the Lord. In Acts chapter 3, verse 1, I already told you this is where they said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I'm going to tell you, the church today can say, silver and gold have we, but power none we have. And we need to be a church. It's all right to have silver and gold. It's all right to be. Abraham was wealthy. In fact, Abraham, the Bible says Abraham was very wealthy. There's nothing wrong with having wealth as long as the wealth doesn't have you. So that you can do what God is calling you to do, but... And he said, silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Took him by the right hand, lifting him up, and he got up leaping and shouting and praising God. Because God's got a call for the church. God's got a call for us. I, I just want to tell you this. There's a river coming, and you need to get in it. Stephen, Stephen in the Bible was the first martyr, but before he was martyred, he, was, he moved in signs and wonder. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. You know, that's why they killed him, because great moving and power was upon him as he moved through the, through the, um, through the giftings of the Spirit. Philip, in Acts 5, 8, Philip was a deacon, and he preached a great revival in Samaria with powerful preaching followed miraculous signs. Boldness in the Lord will produce results in the Spirit. Be bold. Don't be timid. Be bold. It was because of, it was because, listen to this, the Holy Spirit fell on Cornelius and the Gentiles, and caused them to be born again, and not only that, to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. (laughs) 
by the by anointed preaching in the Holy Ghost, Paul cast out spirits of divination and fortune telling. Demon possessed people were healed because of anointed power in the in the spirit in people. In Acts 19, verse 11. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, special miracles, signs, and wonders were manifested through the hands of Apostle Paul. The one thing, one thing about the, the book of Acts is the last chapter in the book of Acts never ended. Do you know why that is that the last chapter in the book of Acts never ended? It's because we're continuing to write the book of Acts. Now, I want to do something. You know, something I said to myself yesterday. I said, you know, these people in the Cornerstone, a bunch of them went to a funeral yesterday. And they weren't, they, they didn't have no mask on. Well, I didn't know anybody. The people I saw, they, they, would, they had no mask on. They come to Cornerstone, and they're not afraid to hug each other and stand out there and talk and what have you. But we don't have an altar because we don't want people to get too close. I'm going to ask you to stand and come to the altar. I want to ask you to come stand, come to the altar, come pray. Ask God to endue you with power from on high, to endue you with power. And we're going to pray for you. Now, if you don't want to come, that's fine. You, you're, you're welcome to stay. But, but come because we're going we're gonna to pray and we're going to believe God for an overflowing or outpouring of God's spirit. Come on. Come this way. Come on. Just get up here. Come on, guys. If you got a husband or a wife, take their hand. Raise your hands to the Lord. Raise your, I'm not going to tell you how to do this. Just raise your hands to the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we're asking. We're asking for revival. We're asking for great signs and wonders. One thing we realize is Jesus is returning. And he's calling for a church, a bold church, bold people, bold leadership. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're asking for healing. Father, we're asking for people that you know. If you know somebody, you just bring that to the Lord. In Jesus' name, we're asking for healing, boldness. In the name of Jesus. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we can cast, the Bible says to cast your cares on you. For you care for us. And I'm casting my care. I have a few of them. I'm casting my cares, throwing them up on you because you care about me and you walk with us. Thank you, Jesus. 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 
Thank you, Jesus. Touch, touch in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, touch this family in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anointing of the Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Touch in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad you all are here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what I feel like. I feel like the Holy Spirit will give you what you ask for. Ask now. Ask now. Just ask the Lord. I believe he'll give you what you're asked for. As a confirmation to what you heard, God's going to confirm his word, the Bible, which says with signs and wonders. If you ask the Lord for something, receive it. Thank you, Jesus. 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 The Spirit of the Lord is in the house. Just receive. Just receive in the name of Jesus. Just receive. Lord, I receive. I receive in Jesus' name. I receive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for Renee this morning. Lord, as she goes for surgery this week, I just pray you just help her and touch her body. Be with her. We exalt you even in the midst of a surgery. We trust you. The Bible says that they're, though the fig tree, that's your prosperity. That's life. Though the fig tree does not blossom, there be no fruit in the vine does not change our position of worshiping and praising God. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you in Jesus' name. Oh, I want to recognize somebody this morning. Um, you can be seated if you'd like. You can pray. Um, it's okay. I want to recognize Josh Gardner. Josh, come up here.
Josh did something yesterday that I could not have done. And I want to publicly thank you, Josh, because people knew you came from Cornerstone. You, Abby, they knew Abby. Abby, um, um, she did a great job preaching that funeral. I don't think anybody, anywhere, any person, the Pope himself could have done that, could have done what you did. If you were at that funeral yesterday and you agree with me, slip your hand up. Yeah, both hands. Thank you, Josh. I was talking to Tad, and Tad said, I couldn't have done that. And I said to Tad, I couldn't have either. Great job. It was worth it, yeah. Well, thank you. Well, I don't know what to say, but God bless you. Thank you for coming. And we're going to see God do some big things in the future. Can I hear an amen? God's going to do some big things in the future. And he's doing it now. He's doing things now. I don't know if, you know, anyway, good enough. God bless you all. You're dismissed.